I am Frank DeCaro, and I am a, a TV and pop culture historian and a writer performer. And we, we love coming to the Academy because we're big TV nerds. I am too. I'm Jim Colucci. I am a writer and uh, author about classic television. Not only have I used the interviews as research material, but I've conducted about a dozen. And I just, I'm floored by the access we have to some of the people who created this medium and how open and honest they are. And as selfishly as an interviewer, getting to meet these idols, as I'm sure you feel as an interviewer, getting to meet these idols that you've always admired and spending time in their homes, hearing about every emotion and moment and thought that went into this. I interviewed, as I said, a dozen people and they all were great in their own way, but the one that really floored me is sitting at her kitchen table getting served lemonade by Agent 99 herself, Barbara Feldon, my childhood crush, and here she is talking about all of the ins and outs of Get Smart and the loveliest person and that's one of those you know sometimes they say never meet your idols and sometimes that's true because sometimes they disappoint she did not disappoint and so many of them do not disappoint I have seen a bunch of these I'm very partial to Bob Mackey because I wrote a book about him in 1999 I did a, a coffee table book about him for and I wrote it for him and uh, so I'm a huge fan and I, I he really is one of the reasons I love television as much as I do because Bob rescued a lot of us kids who were glamour deprived and living in the, the middle of nowhere and wanting so much for a more exciting, more colorful life. And television really brought that to us. I, I feel that TV brought us the world when we were growing up and I have a feeling it still does. I think that's why representation is so important seeing people like yourself on television and seeing people who are completely different than yourself on television because it's not only can be a mirror but it also has a to window. be a window and and so if you have television doing both which i think it does and and honestly we're living through a time where there is so much brilliant content um and we're very lucky for all of that but it also reminds me that we've got to preserve our icons while we've still got them in our midst and and even if we don't, learn from them, seek out their history and the history of the medium. My, well, the most recent book that was published was called uh, Drag Combing Through the Big Wigs of Show Business. So it was everyone from Milton Berle on your, you know, back in the earliest days of television to RuPaul and beyond. But I, the Bob Mackie book was called Unmistakably Mackie. And it was just an honor. And I mean, I've known him for all these years, but really I knew him from when I was a kid on the TV. He was the only costume designer whose name we bothered to learn. Right, right. And, uh, and he didn't disappoint. I mean, TV, is a, it's a magic medium and, it, and it, it does, it not only comes into your living room, it's sort of the portal that takes you out of your living room. And to me, that's its most amazing uh, property of, of television is that you know, you're, you're transported to all these worlds. I was gonna say, I had a therapist once who said, she told her little kid, you can't go in the, the television. And I said, yeah, you can. I said, you most certainly can. I've met so many of the people I grew up adoring. And on, by and large, they don't disappoint. They're kind of great. When I saw the first episode of The Cher Show, and it was when she was going out as a solo act on television after her breakup with Sonny, and her guests were Elton John, Bette Midler, and Flip Wilson. And there's a finale where they do a musical number, and it's all these white and silver balloons. And they're all wearing white outfits adorned with disco balls and glitter. And honestly, I was like, I don't know where that magical place is, but I want to go live in that world. And, um, and I'm lucky because I kind of have gotten to do that. So, although I still don't have a white suit with disco balls all over it, but I wish I did. Instead of getting paid for that Bob Mackie book, I should have bought, got outfits. What was I thinking? I could have had Elton John's duck costume hanging in my closet. Yes. Who was yours? The moment where you're like, I'm going to do that. Well, apparently I was delusional from an early age because I would say the electric company because I would watch the, the phonics lessons they would have and I'd be like, I can, well, I can read that and I can yell, hey, you guys really loud. So uh, apparently I can do this. I apparently didn't realize there would be other requirements and uh, barriers to entry. But electric company, when I was a year old. Morgan Freeman. And Rita Moreno. And amazing people. 
TV has so shaped our lives and kind of given us the work that we do. We write a lot of pop culture books. We have nine between the two of us, although we don't write together. But that TV is really, uh, you know, I mean, college was great, but TV was the genuine education, I think. Yeah, I, I don't know why more people haven't expressed it this way. Maybe it's because they have a better rounded life than I had as a child. But it shows you the rest of the world other than the little piece that you know. And I would learn so much from watching even just sitcoms where obviously the comedy and the humor is manipulated, but some of the humanity was real. I'd look at all the Norman Lear shows and how he delved into humanity. And you'd see other types of people you didn't know, whether they didn't look like you, maybe they were a different socioeconomic class, and get the idea that, oh, what I know is not everything, and I should be more open to it. And that TV would bring it into your living room if you were willing to receive it. And so I just, I just learned so much from it. And then 30-some years later, you wrote a book with Norman Lear. With Norman Lear. Norman Lear, yeah. yeah so. We went and sat on his patio and went through his archives and boxes, and it was it was just like, I can't believe I'm doing this. And I thought of my therapist and said, see, you can go into the television. Ha-ha! <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>